Okay, welcome to our Brain Trust panel discussion. Um, today, I want to talk about something that has been on my mind. This has actually come up in two different meetings I've had this week. Um, and it's, I think, a big frustration in HR, right? So HR has all these awesome ideas, these awesome initiatives they want to do. They want their employees to be happier and healthier and more productive. And um, you guys come up with these amazing ideas of, of initiatives, programs, things that you want to push forward. Um, it can be really frustrating when you can't get the executive backing that you need to push your initiatives forward. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to hear um, you know, what's worked for you, what ideas that you have, what you've seen other people do that has helped get the executive support that HR leaders need to push their initiatives forward within their organization. So that's what we're going to chat about today. Um, just a little backstory, just a couple of examples. Um, I was talking to a company this week um, and they had pushed this initiative forward all the way up to the very top. And then when it got to the C level, the C-level people just said, that's not a priority, right? So as an HR leader, this, this person had spent all this time and all this energy um, meeting with you know the vendor for this program and doing all these things and then and getting it shot down at the last minute. And then I also had another conversation with another, it's actually a client of ours that you know they have amazing programs and their executive team doesn't let them communicate them out. They're very restricted on how often they can communicate with the employees. And so that can also be very frustrating because you can't, you can't get what you've put together for them in front of your team. So um, those are a couple of things that I think are kind of timely that I've, I've noticed just in my conversations, but I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and what you have to say. Um, what experiences you have of how to how to get that executive support that you need to do your job essentially. So, so Amelia, I think for me, one of the things, and this this happens to me quite often, um, just because our my executive team is a little old school. So, some of the things that you know you bring to the table are like too modern or too like you know, future, future thinking. And what I've found that's been helpful is just the power of repetition, right? I, I, I come up with this idea, love the idea. I kind of do 25% of the work for the idea because I know immediately it's going to be like shot down, right? Mm -hmm. And then and then I do like another 50% of the idea, bring it up again within a month or two. Ultimately, either they're just tired of me asking <laughs> Or they finally understand, you know, or hear other companies that are doing it and kind of finally feel like they should do it. Um, and then they finally, you know, kind of give in or, you know, tweak this, tweak that. But I think, and it's funny because I, I remember in my one of my previous lives, I sat with the chairman and I kept asking him, like, why do you always say, immediately say no? And he's like, I'm going to always immediately say no because I wanna make sure that you've thought it out. I wanna make sure that the idea is really gonna be successful before you just come with an idea, you know, that, that you think it's great, but it might not fit our population or our company. And that kind of always stuck with me. So, so now I, I always bring the idea two or three times, even though I know initially it will always get shut down. Um, Cause sometimes they don't have the vision in that moment of that particular, you know, project that you're trying to implement. Or sometimes they might have, you know, a two or three year plan and they're like, well, that might be helpful in the second year of the plan, but not for right now. So for me, it's been just, you know, sort of kind of the power of, of repeating or bringing me back up to the table and not getting kind of felt sad about it getting shut, shut down. Yeah, I think repetition, I think that's a great one. It's just like, it's even like what they say in advertising, right? You have to see like an ad, like seven times or something like that before you even notice it. So they might just need to hear it over and over again. Um, Amber, what about you? Any thoughts? So I have found um, working for a private equity company, there are some different um, trains of thought. So um, I would always try to get my leadership buy-in before going full steam ahead with the, with the project. Um, and I oftentimes 
individually go have some conversations uh, before, you know, finalizing things and socialize the ideas beforehand. Um, if we're really trying to, you know, roll out something new, or even if it's just tweaks and changes to things, um, especially on considering the board that we have, um, they're very conservative, very focused on, you know, preserving cash, things like that. So any type of initiative that's going to cost the company money, they're like, no, we don't want to hear it. We don't want to know anything about it. We don't care. Um, so, and then, you know, once it's socialized and we have buy-in from, you know, the leadership team, um, it's kind of like, I don't, it's not really going to mom versus dad. You're just kind of having these conversations and, you know, where, what, how can it impact your departments and your organization? Um, and they'll start to um, see how that will impact them. So we did this for a new HCM system. Um, and it actually was a cost savings to the company, but we, you know, started having these conversations with, you know, the IT VP and supply chain VP, finance, you know, how can we help better their business? Uh, we'll be able to, um, you know, take away a lot of the processes manually that are happening with the GL process with finance, and we'll be able to work with FP&A and have the, you know, cost coding um, and the budgeting uh, work easier because all of that will no longer be manual, be, you know, automated. And a lot of our active directory syncing problems will go away with IT. So, you know, what can, will help the other department leaders uh, with our initiative that we want to roll out, getting their buy-in so that they can help support us at that CEO and board level. That's where I found success. And then the repetition as well, and taking away the parts that they don't like and having familiar familiarities um, to some other things that they're okay with. So if you have to tweak your program a little bit, you know, have some familiarities in there. Awesome. Thank you, Amber. What about you, Regina? I know usually with, with our group, we have what we call our pit team, which is process improvement team. And we usually meet uh, usually monthly, and if there are things that we need to discuss or programs that we try to or we need to implement, we'll get together as a team and bring those members in that need to be a part of that and sort of like hash it out, come up with, okay, well, if we do this, what's going to take place that, this next time? So we'll try to hash all that out before we get our main leadership team involved, and then once we get the, the remainder of the team involved, then we're able to, to move forward and bring in those other groups or departments that might need to uh, have some buy-in and discuss with them what our thoughts are and our plan to see if they see any problems with it. And then after that, if once we get that all hashed out, then we sort of move forward. So we generally don't have a big issue uh, with trying to get our, prop, our um, get our teams on board uh, because by the time we do that, we've, tried, we've already hashed everything out that we think could be an issue. So it's been a pretty uh, smooth transition for us. Thank you. Jenica. Okay, so kind of similar to the others, um, some things that help us are providing statistics and referrals um, for things that we want to do. So if we can back that up with other companies who've done something similar or other counties because we're a government institution, that usually works really well for us. Um, sometimes, of course, the funding is an issue because we're a public entity. Um, we have taxpayer money we have to be careful with. Um, but my leadership team is very supportive of our employees. They want to do what's best for them, which makes it a little bit easier for me. Um, I've found that if I give them time to ask their questions and time to think it over, um, and if I'm able to answer their questions quickly, um, I deal with elected officials. And so they want answers to those questions as they ask them. So a lot of it is just doing my research first and making sure that I can get them the answers they need and provide any information that they require to be able to kind of get over the hurdle. So that's kind of how it works for us. It's worked really well in the past. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for your feedback and your experiences and sharing that with our communities today. And I will see you guys next month.